In this episode of Artists I Love, we're going to feature a young Swedish artist by the name of Nick Om. We're going to do something a little different on this episode because, honestly, I don't know that much about the artist, other than the fact that his art is incredible. We're going to feature a little painting that he did, a little watercolor that he did recently called, that he titled Ballerina. And we're going to do a little master study of it. A matter of fact, we're going to do two demos, and I'm going to go over some stuff that I think he may have done. And it's really just to pay homage to a great artist, an up-and-coming Nick Om. So I'll start off here with a piece of uh, arches, rough, that has been taped down to a uh, masonite board. To a masonite panel. Started off by wetting the paper uh, to get a soft edge on the hair. I went uh, with a dark mixture, a uh, little bit of black, ultramarine blue, and um, I think I think a little bit of alizarin, but mostly, as you can see, the darker colors. I followed that uh, shadow down in the uh, in the mixture that I'm using on the flesh tones is. Uh, mixture of Naples yellow, cobalt blue, and cad red. No white in this mixture. In the next in the demo that I do on the inset, we will be using a little bit of white. But here I'm just getting an overall flesh tone on the face. And I've worked that shadow down. I fragmented that shadow. In other words, I painted the shadow on the forehead, the shadow on the cheek, the shadow on the neck. Uh, his didn't look that way. His had a flow to it. So this is our girl. Shows up in another one of Nick Om's paintings. Uh, this was an oil. She has a great face, uh, great bone structure, great cheekbones, full lips. The way her eyes set back, she's perfect for a portrait. But, so I wasn't happy with what was going on with the demo that I was doing, so I stopped and I thought I might uh, take another shot at it. I, I eventually finished this, the one that I started, but uh, I'm going to take up here with a new one. So hang with me. So I'll start off this painting by drawing it in really dark. And I did that uh, mainly so it would show up well in the video. So we could you could see what the the uh, some of the boundaries that I'm working with. What I did here is I clean off uh, some of the palette because there's a lot of different ways you can arrive at a skin tone. But in this case, I use what I learned to be a shortcut, which is to use a burnt sienna. And in the first demo, we didn't use any white, but I'm going to use some Chinese white with this. And it's just, like I say, it's burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is basically just a uh, muted orange. So then we're going to add a little bit of Chinese white to it. I put a little bit of a yellow ochre in this mix. Because what we'll do is we will alter this mixture as we need to, as far as um, temperature changes. So in the forehead, we know that it is um, always on the yellow side, most typically on the yellow side. So, uh, and I, I think that has something to do with the the way the flesh pulls over the skull at that point. Now, as you see, as I start blocking in the um, forehead. Uh, and actually, I take this tone pretty much all over the face. Uh, as you'll, as you notice, you know, we even go over the whites of the eyes because, as most of you know, the whites of the eyes aren't white. They're typically a skin tone, uh, altered as as whatever you see, that's how you need to alter it. I mean, sometimes they're, just, they're a little on the bluish side or the cool side. 
uh, sometimes a little on the red side, and sometimes a combination of all that. So always let observation rule the day. So here, as you see, I, I'm going over the uh, the face. Uh, so it's all wet. It's again, I go back to the forehead. Uh, at this point, I'm testing that out. You see, I'm just, I'm thinking, is that going to work? And you have to remember, in watercolor, of course, it dries lighter. So you may feel like that you're going dark and this is hard to get used to especially if you're like me and you're painting back and forth I, I'll paint oils most of the time and then I'll go to watercolor and I will forget that and it'll take me a few before I get back into where I can actually nail down the values and rarely do I nail them down you know I always sort of come back in you know test it and back and forth now what I'm doing here is because one thing that really stood out to me, more than one thing, but this is one. As you can see, I'm putting some greens in there. As that comes across the forehead, gets cooler. It goes into that shadow. And I'm putting some viridian. I'm altering that mixture with some viridian. And then I'm, see how I'm pulling that, uh, the color off of the brow. Because he painted that so perfectly. I mean, a lot of people miss things like that, and you have to be a little different as a as a portrait artist, figurative artist, somebody who um, really admires the human figure. Is is subtle things like that that just make it so perfectly human, and uh, as you can see there, as I'm going around the muzzle, as I'm uh, modeling there I use a little bit of viridian in that mixture now a lot of times with men you'll use a um, a blue a cobalt uh, ultramarine and whatever but you have to be careful when you're painting women uh, with that mixture because it, it can give it can give the illusion of a five o'clock shadow and uh, <laughs> that's not always attractive and that is the uh, <clears throat> That is the challenge with beautiful women and young children, uh, is the delicate beauty. You know, painting a man, a rugged man, an older man, um, there's not a lot of restraints doing that. And it's so, so much fun as far as, you know, you, you don't, you're not on, you're not, you don't have to be as careful, I don't think. But again, you'll see that Viridian showing up in the mixture. Uh, where we were trying to get some cool tones. I'm pulling it on into the shadow area there. And the mistake I made on the first demo, mistake I say, because of how I see Nick on, um, how he has painted it, or how I believe he's painted it, is that shadow area just flows together. In other words, it comes from the forehead, across the cheek, over the jaw, and down into the neck. Uh, you know, with like a perfect, like he did in one fell swoop. Probably didn't, because guys that paint great, or and, and and men and women that paint great, they make you think that it was easy, but it's because they've really put in the time and they've made a million mistakes. But um, the way the shadow looks, see, in, in the first demo, I kind of fragmented it, as I've said earlier. And it's subtle things like that to take away from and or a lack of the mastery that I see in his paintings. This shadow right there on the bridge of the nose, that is cobalt and cad red. And it creates a purpley gray, not a strong purple like ultramarine and alizarin but it's more of a grayer purple. And you'll see that, you'll see that mixture right in that shadow area and under the eye there. Most of us have that right under the eye. 
and uh, you know most of these tones are really just grays and that's one of them that I use right there. Notice I've gone into the whites of the eye with that too. But all I'm doing is taking this uh, mixture of burnt sienna, adding the Chinese white, and not much of it, using it thinly, and then I'm altering it as need be. In this case, in the shadow area, of course, I'm darkening it. I think I put some ultramarine in that. And I'm going to continue that shadow right into the sockets and that's where I say she has a great face the way the eyes set back the way the jaw flows I'm just pulling that tone up into the hair too so it'll flow when I add the darkness of the hair because you don't want it to look stiff because that'll make it look like a wig but I've never had any formal training and I've never got taken to workshops or anything like that. But I have got to see some great painters paint. And what I noticed about them is they're particular, most that I know, they're particular about their subject. So it always helps. The better the subject, you know, the sometimes the easier are the results. And not that great painters can't paint anything. They just know that the results are going to appear different because some things are easier to portray or, or convey. Now we're getting that shadow underneath the nose. It's just a continuation of the same tones that I've used there, I'm using my finger to blend and lift out. I've got in, I pulled that over into the eyelid there, and that needs to, I'll probably back that back out, making it soft around the chin. And there's going to be soft around the mouth. You know, this is, tone is one thing, collar another, but there's also this deal of edges, soft and hard edges. In this case, mostly soft. Now you'll see hard edges around her jawline. Uh, but that's going to be soft, that shadow there around her cheek. It's going to be soft mostly around the mouth. Because like that bottom lip is just going to roll back under to the chin. And again, I'm just going back over it. This is similar to the uh, to the glazing that you see see me do on the other demonstrations in oil, I, I use similar uh, techniques in watercolor as far as to glaze right over top of the uh, first glaze. Some people can nail it in the first try. Nick Om probably did. I don't know that. I would love I would love to hear what he had to say about this, but. As it is, we just we do these to speculate. And every time I do a study like this, even though you know you're not painting from the original, that would be awesome. You are, um, you know, you're relying heavily on the photograph of the painting, the reproduction of it, all of that deal. But I, there are still things that you learn that you can see regardless you know that this was like this or how did he do this probably like this um, but it's all um, it's my education it's how I'm teaching my, I've taught myself to paint it's really uh, in the way you learn to sing you know is by mocking the singers that you love and copying is um, this is what the I mean this is what Sargent did it's what a lot of the guys, a lot of the great guys did is they copied the great guys before them. And uh, and for me, it's it's part of being a fan, too. 
I'm just softening that edge up there around the hair. One, th one, one of many things makes a great watercolor artist, and this, this one is a fact, and that is having complete control over the timing of your, the wetness or dryness of the paper. You, you have to know there's times you just can't come back into the wash. What I'm doing there is softening. I'm adding some more pigment to that side of, of her face, and I'm softening that shadow edge. And right where that cheek turns is where you can add some color. You know, most of the shadow is a dark gray. The face, uh, the cheek part area close to the nose, all of that is uh, a gray skin tone. But right where that cheek turns, that's where you can add color. And actually, I mean, I don't take liberties of it here because I'm copying another artist. But that's where you can also put that collar, as more color is up around the uh, hairline. And right where that form turns, where the cheek turns, right there where you see where I'm adding a little cad red to that burnt sienna mixture. Getting up under the the um, lower lip and doing some work around the chin. Notice you can see the glare off of the paper in the jaw and neck area. You can tell it's still very wet. in that area. Adding a little bit more heat to that cheek. And all I'm doing is while it's wet, is dropping it in. See where it merges with the viridian uh, around the mouth. Putting some warmth into the shadow around the neck. And Nick, arms um, in, the, in the painting that he did, you could see in the shadows there, even though they would be dark, you could see where there was warmth. And that's what I noticed about the sergeant paintings that I copied. The, in the shadows, it was. Plenty of dark, of hot accents. And I'm modeling that nose there, adding some uh, warm tones to the tip of the nose. Getting into that keystone wedge where from the brow it kind of rolls back under. I'm just blending that out. Now I'm putting some color back on that brow, but it's obviously not as dark where it goes right there on the forehead as it turns under and the brow comes up. Just building that up. And Nick had um, Nick Om had uh, her eyes pretty dark underneath, and uh, and her eyes were dark. There were no highlights in them, and 
I kind of could tell where there was ma they were maybe slightly light. They were either bluish or uh, like a uh, light brown or green. But uh, not a lot of detail in the eye. They were just mostly dark. But underneath the eye there, again, pretty dark. You have to be careful with that. But I'm just following what I see. And that's the way he painted it. And uh, he got by with it nicely. She's still beautiful. It doesn't wreck her looks. Although with most people that would. Now I'm just getting that shadow area down in the eye sockets and as again again you can tell I'm just building up slowly approaching each uh, each section uh, methodically I don't know if you can tell, but in the shadow area, how it kind of is granulated. We'll be glazing back over that also. You noticed how in this you can tell where it's dried, how it's gotten lighter. If you look at the earlier frames, that area looks a lot darker and richer. Now it's lighter and a little flatter. But we don't have the benefit of the model to stand there with us, nor are we working from uh, high definition photographs. This is just trying to look at this painting and imagining how this artist approached it. Now I'm going to attempt to do the lips. I think this is mostly a lizard, maybe a little bit of cad red in this first mixture, but I will be building up. And again, the lips will be, the, the edges will be mostly soft. Very few hard edges. Just keep building up. There's... There looks to be evidence to me that he's using some white to get some pinks in here. And that's what I will be doing is coming back in with some, uh, actually some opaque white. Now in the lips, the uh, way he's got it, it uh, soft underneath that bottom lip. The top lip, there is a reflected shadow. It, it turns under and then it, there's a reflection off of the bottom lip. It goes into the top lip. It sounds a little complicated, but, uh, and it's a subtle thing but it keeps her from looking like she's got fish lips right here. There's a little bit of a blue right there and then I lifted that out on the bottom lip, softened it, softened the area. Those edges, those hard edges around the top, we'll be addressing those. And that's what I'm doing right there with that tone around the nose is just softening that, those transitional tones. And that's something that I'm not spending a lot of time in, in a demo like this. 
uh, after I do one, I'm always like, you know, I should have been a little more careful. I should have spent some more time, but I'm like, oh, it's just a demo. But really, you should give your best effort. And that's not necessarily what I'm giving here, but th those could be smoothed out a little better. And uh, But in some cases like this, where they're not smoothed out, the, it's easier for the viewer to see uh, what's been going on, what, what I've done and where those tones actually lay. Uh, I gave commentary when I did it and I didn't like the uh, quality of the sound so that's why I'm redubbing it but I said something there and it was probably something to the effect the way my hand gestures were that I was just trying to stress that you know most of the likeness of uh, painting comes in that triad that the relationship of the eyes to the nose and once you nail that down, uh, then you can base everything off of that. And if you get that down, typically you've pretty much got their likeness locked in. As you can see, I'm just adding uh, darker red to the uh, to those lips, the top lip. And I, again, I believe that is just a muted alizarin. He was able to get some pinks in there, which lends you to believe either he used a tube of pink, which I don't believe he did, or he mixed some white with it. And that's what's going on with that top lip over to the right side there is uh, a little bit of alizarin and or alizarin mixed with a little bit of white and of course you know if you want to mute a red you add a green or there something there about in this case i think i really just used ultramarine to darken it very very little didn't take much because I didn't want it to turn purple. There's where I'm getting that. See that edge of that top lip is way too sharp, too hard. So I'm softening that area up and building up some more. And notice there, the work that I've done there, you got to be careful with that because it's going to, That'll look like a mustache. The expression on her face and the position of her mouth made you feel like she was about to say something. And that's the effect that we're trying to get with the position of her lips and the way she's holding her mouth. And again, this, uh, the skin tone that I've used here is, uh, is just a possibility, probably not even likely. But typically, you know, you use a, a red, a yellow, and some type of cool color like a blue or a green. Now notice that I'm modeling underneath the nose there with some warmer stuff. Some, probably a little bit of uh, orange, cadmium orange, cad red. And I was trying to avoid, you notice where I've got that highlight on the nose. But I'm going to just paint over that, I think, and then we'll just go back and add the white. I think that's what he did. But uh, as I was saying, typically the f flesh, uh, you arrive at flesh tones with a combination of a red, yellow, and a blue. I mean, if you think about it, it's your primaries. 
and then you either thin that down or you add a white. And um, so I was just exploring the possibilities. We could arrive at that in many, many ways. Be interesting to know what he he used because he he's great with skin tones. He is just fantastic. And he uses, uh, and one of the reasons that I really admire him because I'll go back and forth between oil and watercolor and uh, he does the same thing and handles it masterfully. So it's very interesting to see. And a lot of people have trouble with that because you're going from opaque to transparent. And uh, I think it's I think it's refreshing to work in one medium and to uh, go back and forth. I've used acrylic. I've used about everything that there is. And I love it all. I just narrowed it down to the two. I think these two are the ultimate. Um, Watercolor is so handy, and I keep a sketch box with me all the time, and I'm, I'm going to have a video on that, <clears throat> how I make my own sketch boxes, and uh, use, do little watercolors. You know, and I may just do oils the same way. I have the Bashad box that I do the oils with, but I thought, might even cover up with something a little smaller to keep with me because I use the uh, water miscible oils. I have a few tubes that I can't get in the uh, in that um, in the in the water. I have to get the conventional kind. Because, you know, there, there's not a full range of colors in the water, soluble oils. But uh, So sometimes I'll get the conventional type. I've wet that uh, shadow area again around the cheek. All what I'm going to do is um, strengthen it up by adding more pigment. The thing about watercolors are, you, as you work from light to dark, you can be laying stuff in, the light tones in, and as Joseph Zbubich, who's a great watercolor artist, says, you got to have faith. In other words, you have to have the experience, I believe, and the faith that, you know, as the lighter tones turn dark, in other words, as you keep darkening it, and when you put the darks in, then it starts making sense. And as you've noticed, as we've progressed, you know, at first you're like, yeah, I don't know, this is not going to look like anything. Well, as the darker tones get laid in, then it starts coming together. Now I've laid in that dark shadow area to define that cheek. Now I'm softening that edge. Again, Paying close attention to edges and getting that gradation of tone across from the cheek across the face, which gives the illusion of a 3D form. And all I'm doing here is just strengthening up. The, the mix, the tones. Making sure that I'm pulling those tones into the hairline. I'm wet. 
silhouetting that area of the shadow where the shadows fall. In the uh, original, the first uh, study that I did, there's actually a separation. I painted that shadow of the cheek and it pushed the color away from away from the cheek. You have to be careful of that. That was another reason why I didn't like it. And what another one of the um, things that stand out in this painting is the way the tones flow in and out in the way the gradual buildup of tone happens. I'm working now pretty much all over the face, getting the those eye sockets deep enough. Again, you can learn a lot from these master studies, but they can also really make you feel mortal when you uh, look at how effortless uh, Nick Ahm's uh, painting appears, and then you find yourself, and you man, you know, and I look at this. Uh, I look at something like that and think, oh yeah, I can do that. And when I do, when I imagine myself painting it, and when I go into this, it's going to flow into that. And I'm going to, do, and then when you do it, you understand exactly what's going on and how it's easier said than done, and how these these artists really just make it look. Like, it's so effortless, so smooth, and finely finished. And I think a lot of times that's what makes or breaks good um, representational artists. It's, um, it may draw well, it may understand color and tone well, but it's, it's that two or three percent more that finish Now I'm adding some uh, some warm tones into those shadow areas. I'm paying more attention to that bottom lip and how it rolls under, and the chin comes out, and the chin rolls back to the neck. pre-wetting that area underneath the neck and uh, strengthening the shadow as you can see the burnt sienna that I'm using there. I believe I also add some uh, 
cat orange at some point. That's what uh, looked to be in the uh, in the image that I have that I'm using. Keep fussing with that cheek area and kind of uh, fine tuning some other areas. I didn't do enough blending on this and that is one thing that is truly noticeable in his. It is, he, he blended it very smoothly. And I, I don't know if you can notice this, but in the uh, shadow on that nose area that I did earlier, how much darker it looked. And now that it's dry, it's lighter and probably have to be touched up a little bit, softening the areas around the eyes, the transition points. Building up some heat underneath the nose there, probably added a little bit of cad red, sometimes some cad orange. I think I could have done a better job on that nose. There was just a small shadow right behind that nostril. lifted some of that back out because it wasn't a deep shadow it was just a slight gray I don't like the transition between um, the side of the nose there I think that's what I was trying to fix Adding a little bit of pigment to this side of the face now. Because as you can see, it has dried very, very light. In the first demo, I will finish up, I actually complete the hands, uh, and this one I don't uh, even attempt them. The hands are just more of the same. Yeah. And Nick Om did a magnificent job on them also. The knuckles everything around him is just perfectly perfectly painted I'm going back up into the hair and darkening that up I've pre-wetted some then I'm getting in just a dark mixture of black and ultramarine And typically added in that mixture is something warm like alizarin or a burnt sienna, maybe. Probably in this case also to add some harmony. That hair on that side actually flows into the shadow, otherwise that's going to look like a sideburn. We don't want to give her 
five o'clock shadow or sideburns. <laughs> And put a little bit of warm tone in that ear. Doing some blending around that nose. I could have taken better, should have taken better care around the nose. Deepening the eyes there. This brush at times wasn't coming to a good point. I think I switch off to a smaller, to a smaller brush with a better point on it. I got a little careless with it. And again, on that eye right there, you can see in the image that I'm using of his that there is, it's more than just a black dot. There's a little bit of a, a color in the iris. It's either a light brown or a haze or something like that. I think I end up just blacking it in. But right at this point, I've left it sort of a gray. But the image that I, that I was using, that and it's like the way it's lit. Because if you notice, there's no highlights in the eye. There is a sort of around the lid, but not the eye itself. So it's like whatever lighting he had on her wasn't enough to give it, um, put highlights in her eyes. Which means the irises weren't lit good enough to tell what color they are. Adding some more pigment to that cheek, that side of the face. working underneath that eye. You know, he painted her dark under the eyes, but for some reason, uh, he pulls it off without ruining her looks. I'm not sure I accomplished that, but he does. And I think like Sergeant, like they said, Sergeant was a, a realist. I mean, he didn't, uh, he didn't aim to flatter. He uh, painted what he saw. I think uh, when I'm doing a commission, I try to portray that person on their best day. And if not, you know, we try to, if the, if the subject that I'm working from, if the photos or the, what I'm working from in um, real life, if uh, they're not having a good day, then we back up and try it again. Because if I was having a portrait done, I mean, let's face it, there's, there's just some days because you didn't sleep well or stress, whatever, there's some days are not as good as others. And uh, somebody takes the time to have, and the money to, to have me do their portrait, I want it to be them on their best day. I don't want to lie about it as far as how the painting goes, but I want it to be something that they want to hang on their wall. And but where it's honest, you know it's them. It's just them on a good day. Worked on that keystone wedge there, how that how the how the brow rolls under and then the nose comes forward. That gives the, the 3D look. Just 
starting to try to refine that shadow underneath the nose. Darkening the lid up a little bit. It was kind of a that grayish purple that I talked about with the uh, cobalt and cad red mixture. And looking at her lid, I, I couldn't tell if, uh, if he was portraying makeup on her lid or if that's the way her lids look. Because it didn't look like makeup, it just looked like it was naturally color, color in her eyes. You know, and I don't know why, but when the title of this uh, painting is Ballerina, and for some reason when I look at her, she looks like a ballerina. And I'm not sure why that is. To start to build, model the nose. Notice how it's looked flat. Now this will this will lift it off the page some. Coming back in, blending that tone, softening that on the edge. Uh, I could have used more finesse when it comes to blending this thing that's for sure i always think it's good enough for these demos but in reality it's not so i learn something every time i do one of these demos i always learn that i'm not thorough enough that i feel like it's good enough that the viewer will understand what i'm trying to do but you know you still need to pay attention to and you the viewer need to see that that I'm paying attention to those details. And notice how the when the darks, if you know, when the thin washes are on, you know, it's, it's looking like something, but it takes the darks to define what's what's really going on. And once once you lay the darks down, then it all starts making sense. And that darkness right underneath that bottom lip is really important because it'll make or break the redness of the lips as far as I'm concerned. Trying to define those eyelids. She's starting to come together some. It's not my best go, but um, I think I kept it from being a total disaster. And back to those lips. Build up the dark reds, and then we'll end up with some, working some pinks over that. I think there's definitely indication that he used white in there. And that bottom lip's got to go soft and roll under.
Well, I hope you've got something out of this. Again, it's my feeble attempt at Mr. Nick Um. He's awesome. Paying homage to modern day master up and comer.